Greetings YouTube, I hope this video finds you well. Basically I'm showing you this because the next time the turbine's running it should have this on it. This is the 37 tooth wheel which will be replacing the 28 tooth wheel that's on there which I'll show you in a minute. What I've worked out is that I need enough chain to cover uh, nine indents, dips, whatever they're called. So I need to check up on my terminology. So uh, yeah, what I need is a bit of chain with both ends like this. Uh, which covers nine like that one two three four five six seven eight nine so yeah I need to chain that long it's going to have both ends like this and I'm going to use two links uh, which some people probably think is weird actually no problem with it at all you know they're proper they're proper links they're not like it's not like I've bodged it up and hammered that bit together so what that will mean is that we'll have one chain uh, so it'll go on the 28 tooth one and then when it comes off this little bit here the nine links will go in and then it will have a uh, Thing on either end joining them together. So sweet. There's the 10 foot rotor and There is the immensely strong double bearing system, which is uh, Which was a stroke of genius with m16 bolts and also this uh, the struts as I call them and They just take all the weight of the tail. The tail's very long and heavy it's 10 feet long for any noobs. There's the 3 kilowatt bike motor. Uh, it's got an 18 tooth gear on it. Uh, motorbike chain uh, held in by these crudely made clamps. So what I wanted to show you is this is going to be coming off and uh, it's going to be replaced by the big one which involves undoing these and then because of the way these bearings are this drive shaft can actually tip up so that the blades point down a bit and then the other gear should be able to go on there these uh one one of these collars at the uh, back and the front stop any movement of the uh, drive shaft so it all stays aligned the important thing to remember is next time you see it running the motor is going to be going twice as fast as it has been it won't look any different because the, it, the blade should be going the same speed if it's very windy so when you look at the turbine it'll look exactly the same but trust me this the, the motor will be flying around if we can get 300 RPM at the blades, which we can, I know, because I've uh, looked at slow motion footage, then we can get 600 RPM out of this. The chain will be on tighter, uh, but bizarrely that works fine. Uh, it's kind of, it's hard to explain, but when the chain, when the turbine's driving the blades, one side of the chain tightens up. And people say use belts and stuff, but this is motorbike chain, which is good for, you know, God knows how many RPM and a lot of torque. So yeah, that's basically it. I just wanted to reiterate the fact that when you see it, the motor will be spinning very fast indeed. All this kind of stuff's going to get checked. Uh, might move the LED a bit, but it does work. So yeah, one more time. Next time you see it, it should have the big gear on and this motor will be shifting. It will be running. I'll show you actually. Oh dear, the batteries are at nine. So those, these two batteries aren't any good. Just sort that out. Right, okay, that's changed my plan slightly. We'll only be running with two batteries set up as 24 volts, uh, but we will have this, which when it gets really windy, which is it's going to get stupidly windy, I'll be able to plug in up to 1.5 kilowatts of loads. So that should take care of that. I'm not sure the batteries aren't looking good, which is strange because I didn't leave anything plugged in and they seem to be okay. But anyway, when the wind starts piling in, it isn't going to matter. Just another... A note because we're running the inverter we won't be running through this so it's a bit dark we will not be running through this we're going to the rectifier then to the meter then to the batteries then from the batteries to this and then this will drain however much we need to drain I'm hoping to just leave it on draining a kilowatt and this inverter operates between 20 to 30 volts which is quite handy so as long as we don't go above 30 what will happen is uh, the inverter actually only kicks in life when there's at least 26 volts coming down from the turbine which obviously there will be and it'll overload at about 31 volts so the, the key is trying to match the power coming in with what we're using i found the best way to drain decent amounts of electric are using these lights so that that's about it so the wind should be piling in uh, thursday all the way through su sunday and monday as well 40 mile an hour gusts a lot of the time so i'll see you then cheers 